thing where you sell it. Yeah, I am. I have to have adjustable straps for that, and I have to have machinery for it. That looks like Dylan's yeah, job. Yeah, it's not, not worth it, but currently maybe next year I'll put it in Trucking around the third annual Arctoberfest here in Carytown District, here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. My name's The Raven, baby. I'm gonna show you the event. Checking out one of the booths over here at the third annual Arctoberfest in Carytown. Hypnotica, the check this out. And then adjust it to wherever you want the stone to hit. If you have a stone in the front, you'll know exactly where that is. And you can flip that fringe to the back. Or you can let it stay in the front and get like a lariat look on it. Check it out, folks. Kind of like that. One of a kind stuff. The stuff you cannot get at Walmart. Or it's that longer length. If you stagger these, it just makes it look a little bit more intentional. Um, but really, no wrong way to wear it. Just don't get your hair caught with the slider. That's all. Um, you can separate the strand, remove the little slider by separating the strands, or just moving it up and down like so. Do the um, blessing bracelets, um, are they going to be gifts? Yes. Okay. They will get little write ups um, explaining what their uh, concept is. And is the um, Bukamara a gift? Yep. Okay. There's the card right there, folks. Hypnotica. You picked really good ones. Oh. Um, there's nothing you can really do wrong with these guys. They um, can get wet. Nothing crazy happens. The color colors don't uh, wrong with or fade. Um, I take mine on off to the shower, but I do have a customer base that um, leaves them on permanently. That's okay. Check this out, folks. Look at that wolf, man. Wow. Some awesome art here at the third annual Arctoberfest here in Carytown, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Check this stuff out. This is not the stuff you can get at Kmart or Walmart. Look at that. They don't have that. <laughs> Fabulous, fabulous artwork. Look at this. You're not going to get one of those at Target, baby. Showing you a few of the booths here at Arctoberfest 2023. Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA, in the Carytown District. I want to say a special thank you to one of our 
one of our sponsors, <laughs> Pro Hosting USA, ProHosting.com. Check them out on the net, www.ProHosting.com. They've been with the Raven for 25 years and counting now. They never let me down. There's the card, folks, right there. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff, some clothes here. Check this out. Got your scarves for 25 bucks. Got your Mobius wrap for 44 and a vest for 70 bucks. Check that out. Look at this, folks. You're not going to get any of this stuff at Walmart. That's for sure. You're going to have to come to an art festival and buy some stuff from local artists. Okay, folks, you're checking out the third annual Artoberfest. I'm going to show you some really, really cool stuff right here right now. Look at this stuff. Hi. Hi, man. What's your name? My name is Jimmy. I go by a boy, though. Uh, it's my artist name. Uh, I paint sneakers, obviously. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this one here is uh, the Vomero 5. Uh, which is wow, look right at that. Here. Wow, yeah. you paint these, huh? Yeah, with acrylic paint. Takes wow. a while, obviously. Do you paint the shoes also, or just the the, uh, the art here? Every now and then I'll paint a shoe. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just, this is a real s simple example here. Okay. Um, or here's a another example here. Wow, nice. Yeah, this I one's like kind of beat those. up though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. How long you been doing this, man? Uh, I've been painting for about three years. Okay. Nothing cool. crazy. Uh, I'm in school right now at CCS in Detroit. All and, right. Uh, you know, I've just been doing it in my own time. <laughs> and, th and this is just a way to like supplement your income a little bit, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Get your art out there. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. What was your name again? Uh, Jimmy. Is my Jimmy. Name. Bye -bye. Glad to meet you, Jimmy. I'm Raven. Well, nice to meet you, Raven. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and film some of your stuff here, man. Okay, go ahead. It's Let's awesome. Take a look. Yeah. This is one of my favorite pieces here. You can't really see it, but... <laughs> you know what? I think I can get that. Well, maybe not. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll make a way in here for you. There we go. I'll, Just pull uh, that thing aside. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. We're not Hollywood here. Look at there. <laughs> now we can see it. I like yeah, that one, too. That's nice. Deadlock. It's not finished yet, but it's okay. on its way. <laughs> Love it. It's nice. Thank you. You do some cool stuff. Very unique. Thanks. That's the stuff I kind of like to seek out. Yeah, it's kind of a niche category of painting, you know. Yeah. Got to be a sneakerhead. Yeah. But yeah, 
I make all kinds of stuff. Like this here is a handcrafted, uh, hand carved, sorry, uh, wooden, wooden soles. Wow, I really, really like that, man. Yeah, I haven't put a price on it yet. It's one of one, so. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. And it's, you carved it out of wood? Yep, hand carved myself. Sweet. How long did something like that take? Uh, I think uh, it took me about three weeks to do that. Woo. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, Jimmy, thanks for talking with us. Oh, thank you. Okay, man. Do you have a card? Yeah, my card's in this little box here. It goes straight to my Instagram. That's where I do all my business. So. Okay. Yeah, feel free to take one. <laughs> Yeah, you can scan it with your phone, go straight to my Instagram. You're such a good sister. Okay, folks, there you go. There's your info right there for Jimmy. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some stuff that's really, really cool here. Check this out. In the process of being made, the line gets doubled. So they, they're real light. But they're extremely strong. You know that those are real leaves, right? No. Those are real leaves that have been pressed and dried and then they're electroplated. This is the same with, with these down here. You've got a lot of, uh, lot of leaves to choose from this fall. <laughs> Every fall. Yeah. Hi there. What's Hello. your name? Nancy. Nancy, glad yes. to meet you. My name's Raven. Hi. Hi. I'm filming stuff for the Artoberfest. Could you tell us a little bit about your art? Well, um, I, I heard what you were saying about the leaves. Could you tell me more about those? Sure. These are real leaves. Um, I use these as pendants, and then they, there's got to have matching earrings. So of okay. course we have matching earrings here. But these are real leaves that have been pressed and dried, and then they're electroplated, either with 24 karat gold, fine silver, or copper. Wow, that and is really cool. Some, I think I've sold out of all my copper ones, so I have rose gold, 24, um, yellow gold, and the silver, but this is what the copper looks like. And the copper actually has like a, an extra coating on it that gives it an iridescent effect, right? which is what causes it to sell out really fast because yeah. it's just really pretty. They, they do look really cool. They yeah. look different than all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. this is, now I what about these necklaces here? <laughs> Um, these, well, this one has been sold, so we'll take that down. But um, this is called bead weaving, and so this is really my art. Is um, what, what was I do. it again? Bead weaving. Bead weaving. Okay. Yes. As opposed to like there are like lots of different things you can do with beads, lots of lots of different weaving type crafts, but this is called bead bead weaving, and within bead weaving you have different stitches that create different patterns and different textures and then you have different size beads, different shape beads, beads that have more than one hole through it so you can do different things. Like this um, particular necklace is made with a, a bead called a, a super duo. Wow. And so it's an oval shaped bead that has like a hole at either end. Okay. okay, and so that's that's made with a, a super duo, and then uh, something like this is just made. Most of it, I, I just use seed beads, which is just a round bead with one hole through it. So this this particular stitch is called a herringbone stitch, and I do a lot actually with that stitch. Okay. Um, let's see. This is called a peyote stitch. In here. And this is called a Russian leaf. So these little leaves, it's, it, it's actually, it gets its own name. It's called the Russian leaf stitch. Okay. Thank you. Very, very cool stuff. And let's see what else I got that set. Why doesn't Whoa. that want to stay up there? Uh -oh. Well, huh. thanks a lot for talking to us. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on your card here. Okay. The high bead. No wonder, because this is 
broken. Right there is your info, folks. Nancy Cooper. <laughs> yes, she fixes her. Send her an email. <laughs> Tell you it's odd on internet TV. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some stuff that's really, really cool. Check this out. Very, very unique art. Look at this. Fabulous stuff. <laughs> you want to be my fella to hold your hand? I don't know if you want Hi, man. What's your name? Hi. How are you? My name is Ramon Uluguna. Glad to meet you. My name's Raven. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You made all this art? Yes. Wow. How did you get started doing that? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a modern contemporary art uh, from Nigeria. Okay. So I inspired by some of the masters in my hometown. Cool. The popular home for the art called Oshobo. Okay. We call it the style of Shogo, Shogo School. Nice. So I started my career 20 years ago. So, and the medium is oil on canvas, and each of my pieces tells a story. This is Village of Peace. This one is the Village of Peace. Uh, Women Discussion. Unity, under one umbrella. Oh, I like that unity. That's nice. Acrobatic dancer. Acrobatic dancer. Wow. Village of Peace. Warrior. That one on top, Warrior? Yes. I like that. The Village Elders. Okay. Let me get that too. Nice. You made the news, huh? Yes. Cool. Alright folks, there's the info right there. Prince of Art. There's the email address right there. Well, thanks an awful lot for talking with us, man. You're welcome. Okay, thank have you. a nice day. All right, thank you. Looking around the third annual Artoberfest here in Cary Town District, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Check this out, folks. Look at that. They're up ahead, I think. Wind chimes. I love them. <laughs> really, really cool and unique stuff you can get down here at Artoberfest. 2023 here in Kerrytown. Look at this. Fabulous, fabulous. One of a kind art. At least I knew you had to do the conversion. <laughs> There's 
the card, folks. Well, hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Kathy Woodruff, and I'm a fused glass artist here at Arttoberfest in downtown Ann Arbor. Wow. Um, uh, everything I do is fused glass, so it's glass cut and layered on top of glass, and then I put it through a kiln. Most of them, the top temperature is 1385 degrees, but once it's in the kiln, it's in there for 14 hours. Um, at that top temperature, it's only there for 15 minutes of the 14 hours. So everything else is going up slowly and coming down even slower. Here's one of my um, popular items, and it's a four season lantern. And we start here with summer, wow. fall, winter, and spring. Man, so you get all nice. four seasons in one piece. Yeah. Now tell me more about the fused glass. Do you smash the glass up first? Some of it. So okay. like the the leaves on my trees are all smashed glass. And um, but most of it I buy in full sheets and then I cut it down to the pieces I want it. Just like in stained glass. Okay. So and then you heat it up and then put, put it, it on your art. Correct. Oh man, it's cool. Correct. Really unique. I love the lanterns. Thank you. Like when you put the candles in, it just lights them up. Yep. And they, at night, I bet they look fabulous. Absolutely. Well, thanks an awful lot for talking with me. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, no problem. I love filming the art festivals because this is the stuff you cannot get at Walmart. Right. <laughs> we don't need any more of that Walmart crap. Nope. Okay, thanks an awful lot for talking. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Showing you the cool stuff, baby. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really, really cool stuff. Look at this. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Look at that. You know I'm a flowers guy. I love the flowers. the bird's nest. Nice. Hanging around the third annual Arttoberfest here in Cherrytown District, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. And you know, baby, my name's The Raven. I show you the cool stuff. Hi, what's your name? I'm Kim Roney. I'm the artist that is uh, furnishing this booth today, so thanks for stopping in. Glad to meet you, Kim. Could you tell us a little bit about your art? Sure. Um, I am a contemporary impressionist. Um, I like a little subject, but I also like to take a lot of liberty. And uh, work that I have in here on the walls today are all my originals, and then I have reproductions in print bins. Um, my process is oil paint with a little bit of cold wax medium, and I... Could you explain that a little mm -hmm. bit? I'm not familiar with that technique. It, it, it's a little quirky, and it's not very common, but cold wax is... Um, uh, beeswax, a little bit of low VOC solvent and resin and I combine that with my oil paint as I'm working and then it and what enables does it do? me to, uh, it helps me thicken the paint so that it doesn't wrinkle or slub as I'm working okay. and it also allows me the ability to carve back in or scrape so I can do scraffito which is you know the scraping, I can scumble, with, it kind of has a tactile feeling to it, right. it's a little dry and it also allows me to layer the paint up kind of thick and the paint will stand and hold. So it's okay. really a, a cool um, aspect of my process that I've developed over the years and I like to apply paint um, with a series of knives. So I use some brushes, but I also like, I really like to use I, knives. I used to watch that guy on PBS. Uh, what was his name? The Bob guy, Ross? Bob Ross, yeah. He painted with the knives. He did. The he first would time put I whiskers seen on it. kittens with knives, I remember. Yeah, the yeah. first time I ever saw him do that, I was just blown away. Yeah. Some yeah, of the stuff fun. he does. Yeah. yeah, and so your stuff is kind of familiar or, or similar. Uh, yeah, I mean, bit. I have my own subject matter and.
process, but yeah, the knife painting is definitely uh -huh. cool. uh, my thing. Could yeah. you tell me about this one here? So I live 15 miles south of Ann Arbor in Milan, and um, I grew up on a farm, and I live on uh, 11 acres from the original farm, and I am just a, a farm girl at heart, so when it's hay bale season and the, the combines come out, harvest yeah. the beans and the corn, and the bales are all piled up, to me they just look like fantastic sculptures, sure. and I love the way they reflect light and color, uh, the color that comes with the season, and so this is just my interpretation of hay bale season. Cool, I love it. Thank you. And this is a really good example of the thick paint um, with the wax and the knives. And yeah, all of, I like all that one a lot. It, it just kind of grabs me for some reason. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to awesome. film some of your contact info here. Alrighty. Okay, there's the name, folks, Kim Roney. I'm booth number 20 this weekend. Yep, booth number 20 this weekend. There's the contact info right there, web address and email. Well, thanks an awful lot, Kim, uh -huh. for talking to us. Thanks for stopping by today. Okay, bye bye. Right. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. These are not photographs, they're hand drawn by the artist. Check this stuff out. Maybe a few people you might recognize up here. Hey, we know him. And those guys. And her. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. Check this out, folks. Look at this. All hand drawn. The guy's a fabulous artist. I really, really like that one right there. What's up, man? Maybe we can talk to the artist for a second here. Hi, man. What's your name? Hi there. I'm Paul King. Glad to meet you, Paul. My name's Raven. Raven, good you to see you. You drew all these? Oh yeah, I'm a portrait artist. Wow. And uh, yeah, I draw uh, portraits of uh, famous musicians, and I use a photograph as a reference only, and it's all uh, hand drawn. I have a uh, digital airbrush program, so I draw them uh, on an airbrush uh, program, and I have all genres. Um, you know, rock, folk, R&B, jazz, country, and um, and I also have a website. I sell them on my website as well. Okay, what's your website? Uh, it's uh, paulkingart.com. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on your card here in a second too and give everybody the info, but I just wanted you to spit it out too. Great. Right from the artist himself. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. You're not gonna get that kind of service at Walmart. <laughs> And you cannot buy this stuff at Walmart. Right. Thanks a lot for talking with us, Paul. Good, thank you. There it is, folks. PaulKingArt.com. Cool, cool stuff.
fucked up. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really, really cool stuff again. You know I do it all the time. Check this out. You're at the third annual Artoberfest here in Cary Town District, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Just trucking around, checking out the booze for you, some of the artists. Look at this, fabulous, fabulous artwork. I really like that one right there. Just grabs me. And the dog. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Laura. Laura Rangos. Laura, my name's Raven. Could you tell us a little bit about your art? Sure. Um, this is all made out of um, fabric. Um, it is appliqued or top stitched onto another piece of fabric. You said fabric. What kind of fabric do you are you using? Repurposed fabric or brand new fabric? It's it's um it's mostly batik fabric. It's quilting fabric. Okay. Um, it's new. It's it's not repurposed. And um, yeah, so I use a lot of batik because it's very good quality. Um, and then I, I stitch it. Uh, I, I start with a um, a drawing or a photograph, and then I, um, I make a pattern and cut out the fabric uh, and sew it all down. So it's all sewn, and then I make the frames after. Okay. Kind of like embroidery a little bit. Um, it, uh, I, mean, more, I don't know, more like a collage, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've never with seen fabric. I've never seen anybody do it with fabric like that. I like that. I, and this is where you stitch it right there. Yeah, I stitch along every every edge. To, you know. Okay. Like right there, folks. See that? All hand stitched. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thanks for talking with us. Oh, thank you. You said you have a website? <laughs> yes, it's um, LR, here's my card, LRDesignLLC.com is my website. There we go. LRDesignLink.com. And there's the email right there. Or no. Yeah, there it is at Comcast.net. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks an awful lot for talking with us. Oh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I just butt in on people. That's all right. That's great. <laughs> Checking out the third annual Artoberfest here in Cary Town District. Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. It's a very, very nice fall day. Okay, folks, I just showed you the artist info. I'm going to show you some really, really cool glass stuff here. This guy made all this stuff himself. Look at this. Fabulous stuff. Here at the 2023 Artoberfest in Carytown District here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. 
Look at that, folks. Wow. Some more really, really nice stuff right there. Look at that. And if I try real hard, I might be able to get an interview with the artist for you here. Hey, man. What's your name? Justin Straub. Justin, glad to meet you. My nice name's you. Raven. Could you tell us a little bit about your artwork? Yeah, so what I am is I am a torch worker, a flame worker. So we're kind of the other end of the blown glass world. Uh, we don't work in furnaces, but we work on torches. Uh, I work in 33 COE borosilicate, which is Pyrex, so this is hard glass. Uh, it's good sculpting glass. The reason we use it is because it cracks less and we can get to, uh, uh, I guess it would be called a bench temperature. We can get it to room temperature without it cracking, falling apart, like which is what happens with a lot of soft glass pieces. And then once it gets soft, you just kind of manipulate it where you want it to go? Is it, that it? Yeah, so I work off of points, and then I do a technique in specific called tubulation. I was taught by a guy called Simone Cristani. Uh, he's north of Venice. Good guy. Um, basically what I do is I get bits hot, and then I drop them onto a hollow piece, and I blow into it. And then each one of the connections here on these is an extra bit that gets added on so that you can start to sculpt the joints and things like that as you work it. And a lot of it, really what it is, is it's you drop it, you get the bubble started, you have to wait for the temperature to homogenize, and then you blow and you pull. And that's and as you blow and pull, that's how you sculpt. It's when you're actually pulling when it's hot, and then you just kind of flash it in the fire a couple of times. Wow. It takes, it takes some getting used to, but, you know, it's... It's fun. You know? I would love to see the process. I'd love to film your process. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, I'm down at the Jack Klein Glass Studio. So I work out of this studio right here. And this is in the Hocking Hills. And we have six or seven glass blowers down there that also blow pumpkins. So Jack's work is also on display. Okay. And then I work in the front in the gallery. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, man, for talking with us. Hey, no problem. And man. telling us your, you know, process. Yep. Okay. If you thanks got any more questions, lot, man. Let me know. Here's the info right here, folks. There's the email, and we're out. One more on our way out, folks. Check that out. The hand. See ya. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some more really cool stuff. Look at this. Wow. Very, very colorful art. And remember, folks, this is not the stuff you can get at Walmart. It's not available over there. You're going to have to come to an art festival like this one and buy it from the artist himself. Oh man, look at that. Fabulous stuff. And you're seeing it all at the third annual Artoberfest here in Carytown, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Hey man, what's your name? Hey, uh, my name's Anthony Bress. Hi Anthony, my name's Raven. Hey Raven, welcome. Could you tell us a little bit about your art? It's fabulous, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, some of my art's all acrylic on wood, and um, they're all just kind of weird ideas that pop in my head throughout, I don't know, my days, and I just kind of sketch them out and then turn them into paintings. Cool. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been creating art my whole life, but I'd say really focusing on painting in general um, the past six years. Okay, cool. Yeah. You're a very good artist, man. Hey, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I love your stuff, man. It's Thank very you. colorful, really nice. Yeah, it's all, uh, I use a lot of my house plants as my um, inspiration. 
cool. They're, they're my models. Uh huh. That works. You know, whatever works, you gotta do it. You kinda gotta go with it, flow. Right. Like that's just what I'm really looking forward to. They do the time. I do this for uh, my career. And, um, yeah. Well, thanks, man, for yeah. talking with us. Happy Halloween. Are you yeah. having a good time at Artoberfest? Yeah, I'm having a great time. The, the sun's out, it's nice. People are um, vibing. It's actually yeah. starting to warm up a little bit, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm like putting my jacket on and off every time the sun peeks out. Uh huh. Are you from Ann Arbor here? I'm from Warren. Um, okay. So not too far. Not too far away, yeah, no. Stay in the weekend, though. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks an awful lot. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Okay, folks. There's some info for you right there, and I'll give you some more here in a second. Right there. Look at that. And there you go, folks. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, we'll see you. <laughs> okay, You'll we're going like, oh. in again. Oh. <laughs> Checking out some of the artists here at the third annual Artoberfest, Carytown District here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. One of the coolest art festivals in the whole wide world, baby. You know me, I'm the Raven. I would never lie to you, Martha. Wow, really unique stuff. Hi, man. Hi. What's your name? My name's Ernest Fackler. Glad to meet you, Ernest. My name's Raven. Nice to meet you. Could you tell us a little bit about your art? Sure. I make hand-carved, hand-inked, and hand-printed woodcut prints um, using wood boards like the ones on the table here. Um, what, I, what does that involve? I, so, I'm not exactly sure what, what it involves. So I take flat pieces of wood, I hand-carve them with different shaped metal tools and then um, I ink the boards and make prints from the boards. Wow. Uh, most of the multicolored prints are reduction prints and what that means is it's made from one piece of wood that's that's carved and printed and then carved more and printed and carved more and printed to build up the color layering. Oh wow. So once I'm done with that, um, for instance like the ones up here, uh, all that's left of the wood is the black part and so I can't recreate them anymore. They're, once they're, the addition's done, it, that's it. Right. It's fabulous. How did you get started doing that? Well, so my background is in painting and drawing, uh, but after college, I, many of my favorite artists also did woodblock printing, and so I just tried it out myself and then gradually got more and more involved in it. I'm, I'm also an educator, and so art is really just my whole life. I, I teach and I do this for my side hustle. Cool. Um, I seen something kind of similar on, on cable TV. They were talking about, uh, I think they said lithographs, mm -hmm. maybe where they, they carve something like that and then they reproduce the, the posters off of the one block. Uh, yeah, so lithography is a little bit different process. That uses like resists and um, solvents and things like that, whereas okay. woodblock printing is, is a relief. Um, just printing process is it, yeah. a lower area and a higher area, and what you get from the print is the higher area. Right. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for showing us some stuff. Thanks. And for thanks for by. talking to us. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in on your card here. Sure thing. There it is, folks. There's the info for you. Right there, this is the stuff you cannot get at Kmart.
or Walmart. You're gonna have to call this guy up. <laughs> okay. Thanks an awful lot. I Thank love you. this stuff. I think it's fabulous. I appreciate it. Very unique and a little bit different than everything else I see. I mean, I could probably finish it. Thanks, man. Okay, we're getting ready to show you some really cool stuff here. Look at this. Awesome. Okay, folks, I'm going to give you the information for the artist right here. All these pictures you just seen were by a guy named Melvin McGee. Here's his website, melvinmcgee.com. Thanks, Melvin. Okay, folks, we're here at booth number 74. Check this out. I'm going to show you some really cool stuff here. Look at this. Wow. This is the unique art, folks, at the art festival. Stuff you cannot get at Walmart or Kmart. Dogs down here, look at that. There you go, Steve Wirtz, Cartoona.net. There's the email for you right there. Now, if I try real hard, we might be able to talk to the artist here. Hi, guy. What's your name? Uh, I'm Steve Words. I'm a sculptor. I'm currently living in Gatesville, Michigan, which is a little bit north of the bridge. Okay. Um, I work in uh, laminated paper, which is a fancy name for paper machine. Nice. Um, I do a lot of things that involve uh, wire armatures. I don't know if you can see this, but the chicken wire chicken. Wow, that's cool. And then I will layer different types of paper over the top of that, hence the laminated paper. Laminated means layered, so I'm layering paper over the top of that, and then that creates my sculptures. Wow. And if you do it correctly, when it dries, it's very, Pretty it's very hard. hard. Yeah. It feels almost like wood when it's done. Nice. I thought that's what it was when I first came up. I thought it was wood carving. That's right. It has that, that same kind of look. And of course, mm -hmm. paper, of course, comes from wood. Uh, the fibers are similar to wood. So when you're layering it, if you create the layers in different uh, directions, it, it gives that strength back, almost like you're bringing it back to wood. Almost. Right. Um, I do a lot of things that involve silly things. Animals are a 
a popular thing with me. Uh, but I also enjoy uh, some sports figures and things. I think you've kind of seen some of these you've panned over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my thing. I am uh, I'm a sculptor, and I like doing fun, whimsical things. I love things that have dynamic uh, compositions. I like humor, um, and it's just a lot of fun. It's yeah. Fun fun well, that's the name of the game. You know, if you like it, right? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, and if you like it, somebody else is always going to like it. You got to please yourself first, and you got to be your toughest critic, but you got to have fun too. So right. That's, right. That's all part of it. It took me a while to come around to that one, but I made it. <laughs> Good to hear. Good. Well, thanks for talking with us. Well, I'm going to zoom in on your card one more time. Well, thanks for stopping by. Okay. There it is, folks. There's your info right there. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some more cool stuff, man. Look at this. If I'm not mistaken, these are all handmade. Showing you some of the cool booths here at Artoberfest 2023 here in Carytown District here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Hi, what's your name? Patricia Zachary. Hi, Patricia. My Hi. name's Raven. Hi, Raven. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your art? Okay. Well, this is all, all wheel thrown, of course. Um, stoneware. It's fired to count ten. Um, uh, gas reduction. Um, I don't know what else you want to know. I do have favorite pieces. Uh, you you actually spin them yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I make my own glazes. Um, a lot of times, I make my own clay, also. So it's really, it's really a work from the ground up. Okay, you say you make your own clay. How would you do that? Uh, you just order the dry materials from a ceramic supply, uh, like your fire clays and a little bit of a feldspar. It just, I'd sound like a mad scientist if I. It's mined materials, and there's like ancient. Uh, uh, clay and, and glaze uh, formulas that you can look up and follow. I went to school for this so you know our ceramic studio we had all those old glazes that had been in circulation for for eons and you just keep the formulas and 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 uh, get your materials from a ceramic supply wow. and and I like making my own glazes because um, you, you can tweak the formula a little bit. You want it to be a little bit more matte, a little bit more runny. You you, you know what to add to it to, to get to get the result that you're looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. Now after you make those, you, you put them in an oven and bake them. I yep. Yeah, they are. I fire my work in a gas kiln. Um, uh, I, I get a reduction, which is like at some point in the firing it goes to like 2300 degrees 2330 okay and um, uh, a little bit before it reaches top temperature you put I put the kiln into a reduction which you just kind of close off the damper a little bit and it kind of um, takes a little bit of the air out of the atmosphere and it dirties up the atmosphere because things are firing out of the clay out of the glazes it, it puts all that in the atmosphere kind of dirties it up and then it goes it, it when you open it, it goes it burns back into the the glazes wow. so it just it's a nice effect i like having that kind of control with yeah. making my own glazes and doing my own firings and i i do i love doing gas gas well, it firings makes it like really that. unique mm -hmm. uh, your way yeah uh, it's not like a mass produced thing that you could get oh, definitely at Walmart, not. you know yeah in, in fact i kind of like it just just cringe when people come in and they want me to make sets of this and sets of that right. and and I, I don't begrudge anyone you know my hats off to them the potters that just 
just are like production potters that do everything in sets and stuff like that. I'm kind of not so much that way. It's more one-of-a-kind pieces. I like the one-of-a-kind stuff yeah, myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll start out in the studio and I'll measure out like like these these uh st you know beer steins. You know, I'll measure out you know uh, ten or twelve uh, two and a half pound lumps of clay, wedge them, and. I kind of have a little bit of a, do I want to make it more barrel shaped, do I want it more straight, and I'll right. throw a few of each, but none of them are going to be exactly, exactly, exactly like. yeah. I remember my undergrad, I watched this movie, one of my ceramic professors, he showed us this movie of, of these um, production potters, I think they were in China, and the way they had to stop. It, you, you know, you're throwing, you center it, you, you, everything, all these measurements, these things to measure as you're, it's like, no, I just want to eyeball everything. And, it, was, and, it was too much like a factory, huh? I, oh, yes, yeah. yes. It's like, I do not want to do that. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, I'm going to zoom in on your info right here. Okay. Now, if people want to find you, they can find you on Facebook, right? Facebook or Instagram, absolutely. Okay. Patricia Zachary on Facebook or Instagram. And you tell her you've seen it at the Oktoberfest Festival, okay? Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Thank you. Okay, folks, I'm gonna show you some more cool stuff. Look at this art. Very unique. Fabulous artwork. You know me, folks, I like to seek out the stuff that's unique and different. <laughs> okay, folks, there's the contact info right there. Now, if we try real hard, we might be able to get a little interview with the artist. Hi, what's your name? Lori from Alchemy Fluid Art, and these are my paintings. Cool. Yeah. How'd you get started doing this? Um, so I started about eight years ago. Um, I kind of wanted to make some art for myself, fill up some wall space in my home, and cool. I kind of started painting small, and then over the years it's progressed to large, um, large canvases, which I think works better. But yeah. Are, um, are you doing this with a brush or? Uh, no, so it's um, What's paint, your process? Uh, paint mixed in a cup or a container and then either layered in the cup and poured onto the canvas or actual the actual colors, puddles poured on the canvas. But you don't mix them up, you leave them Yes, separate. yes, yeah. so they, they pour in, in layers. And um, most of the, the theory behind it is you layer your heavy pigments on top and the light ones on the bottom and the heavy sinks and the bottom bubbles Come up out. to the top. Yes, wow. so that's that's what happens and that's what creates the spots or bubbles or lacing or whatnot. Okay, um, so in a way, these paintings are painting themselves. Yes, kind absolutely. Of. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I just moved. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, and it, it, so depending on how it goes on the canvas, that's kind of what kind of leads you to how it's how it's gonna work um, and some things don't work sometimes it takes me 20 times to a actually end up with you know something, something like that something large yeah that right. it's a, it's really easy to do it on a small scale because you don't have to pull that paint but when you start trying to pull paint four and five feet it kind of things get a little wonky and stuff okay. so um, yeah so I've kind of developed over the last couple of years ways of getting it big Right. On, on yeah. larger canvases. I love it. It's different. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it it's fun to do. Anybody can do your it. Eye. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Um, I couldn't draw a person or 
a stick my, my stick figures are wonky. Right. So um and anybody can do this. Right. And it's I'm, a lot I'm of fun. I kind of like that too. I can't draw anything. My penmanship is bad. But I can run a camera. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks for talking yeah. to us. Thanks for I'll stopping by. I'll show your by. contact info yeah. one more time. Sure. Thanks for stopping by anytime. There it is, folks. Contact info for Miss Lori right there. Just walking around the 2023 Oktoberfest here in Barrytown, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. This is what it looks like, folks, if you was actually right here walking down the street. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff right here. Check this out. Fabulous artwork. your name? I'm uh, Jeff Fowler and I'm a photographer. Glad to meet you Jeff. My yeah, name's Raven. Could you tell us a little bit about your artwork? Uh, yeah, sure. I really like shooting uh, things that happen um, rarely. So like this piece for example is uh, Firefall. So there's only two weeks out of the year where it happens where the sunlight lines up just right. It shines wow. only through the water at sunset. Fabulous. Um, or moonbows. Those, so those are rainbows caused by moonlight. That's uh, three nights out of the year in Yosemite. Uh, so yeah, so those types of things really draw me. Just the uh, you know ephemeral bits of nature that you just gotta be there in the, the right moment to capture it. Right. I seen something about that that waterfall there on TV one time maybe. Yeah. They were talking about that how it only lit up just that one time. Yeah per year or something. Yep. And you went up there and photographed it? Yeah, so I've been there uh, nine times. Wow. Um, and, or nine nights to try and see it. Uh -huh. And I've only seen it look like that twice. So wow. clouds can kind of ruin it. Wind can blow the water all over the place. So <laughs> but you got this guaranteed. shot. Yeah, I got, I got lucky. Oh yeah. man, it looks beautiful. And I'm sure that's the one I've seen on TV. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you have a website? Uh, yeah, it's jefffaller.com. Uh, my last name's spelled P as in Paul, F as in Frank, 
A L L E R. But uh, yeah, you can find everything on there um, and follow me if you want to keep in touch. Okay, do you have a card? Yeah. Hold it up for me and I'll zoom in on it for you. There we go. There's the web address, folks, right there. 25% off, man. You can't beat that. Call this guy up. You might be able to buy one of these if you're lucky. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Walking around the Cary Town Artoberfest for you. I live in that brick right now. This is the closest gig I've ever had. No, she made me ahead of time. Walking around the food court, baby.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock on. Okay, folks, here's the info for the artist right there. Right there. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, you got it. You're the man. Thank you. You just but saw Mr. Daniel. I love it, yeah. I would if, if I got invited. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay, I'm gonna show you some more cool stuff right here. You know, I like to seek out the really unique stuff. Here we go, folks. Look at this. Fabulous artwork. Look at this. Hello. Hi. These are beautiful. Well, thank you. I I um, paint on copper mostly. Um, there is some plexiglass, but I use alcohol dyes. And um, there's copper leaf in the ornaments. This is my own technique. Oh, very Fabulous, fabulous artwork. Now, if we're real lucky, we might be able to get a little interview with the artist here. Yes. Hi, what's uh, your name? Hi, I'm Lori Camrad. Um, this is my card. <laughs> I, I'm influenced mostly by Frank Lloyd Wright and Van Gogh. Um, I have Starry Night that I... I did after I went to the immersion show nice. uh, for Van Gogh, and um, I paint mostly with alcohol dyes because um, of all the colors. Could and, you explain more um, about that? I'm not sure yeah. I've heard about that before. Okay, it, it's um, it's a real concentrated dye that um, you can paint directly with uh, paint brushes on most any surface. Um, I paint on plexiglass and, and copper because it does show through. Yeah. And um, and I actually put like copper leaf on a lot of my pieces. The glittery part is mica. Okay. And um, I I'm very influenced by nature. I do a lot of things with leaves and. Uh, uh, but it's mostly uh, Frank Lloyd Wright inspiration, and uh, I'm the only one doing it, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. This is really unique. I, okay. I haven't seen anything like it yeah, here well, at all. Yeah, it would be me otherwise. That's why I stopped by your booth. <laughs> okay, well, thank okay, you. Okay, hold up that card one okay. more time okay. again. Copper paintings, yeah. Lori, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. Copper painting info dot info. Yep. There you Copper go, painting dot. Yep. Yep. Thank right. you, sir. Thanks for talking yes. to us, Lori. You're very welcome. Walking around the 2023 Oktoberfest here in Cary Town, District, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. Different, a little different Where would we put it? 
but I'll see if I can find one tomorrow. Oh Taking a little walk for you here, folks. I did. I did. We're almost at the end. I'll go to the middle. Yeah, doggy. What's the name of that? Okay, folks, I'm going to show you some really, really cool artwork here. Check this out. Very colorful stuff. Okay, music, dance, celebrate. Storytelling and celebrating. Here you go, there's the info right there. Now I'm gonna show you the dude. <laughs> There's a guy floating around Chelsea, Ann Arbor, I guess, doing what I'm doing. He puts out a, a boom box. I don't know if I like his choice of music, but hey, to each their own. And he just has these random dance parties. Right. And I do the same thing. Cool. And we haven't met yet. Watch out. Something uh -huh. might happen. <laughs> no, play this. Play that. No, I don't like that. <laughs> uh -huh.
Random acts of music. Rhythm. That's really cool. Yeah, Thanks this is a magical. That's a magical one. I guess the notes that play together, none of them mind playing with the notes. Right. You can't, you can't go wrong with that one, I guess. No. That's how I feel when I play it. Okay. Thanks, man. Oh wait, to Raven Productions, uh, you know, capturing moments of magic. Sometimes, you know, probably other moments too. But here's a Raven. My, I have several Raven calls. Cool. Ravens aren't in this part of the country. I don't know if you know that. And I don't know if you know or not, but they also have white ravens. Did yes, you know of that? course. Of course. They exist. Yep, and, and pink ones. But then they hooked up with a flamingo and it got crazy. Right. <laughs> That's more of the, black, you know, the crow. Uh-huh. That's a crow. If I hear one, I can match it. And supposedly, COVID, Corvid birds have almost identical, we have almost identical vocal cords really? to that bird. Wow. And out of two species of animals on the planet, blackbirds, corvids, and a monkey in Madagascar are two creatures that fashion a tool for their use. Yeah. That's it. Right. <laughs> Monkeys will use something Majority, but those alter something to use. Right. They fashion. Right. I love it. They yeah, make great. tools. <laughs> Thanks, man. Okay, folks, there's the web info right there for you. And that's pronounced Andrew, you know, just okay. playing around phonetics. Cool. Have a nice day, Raven. You too, man. Thanks. See you later, Andrew. You know it. Two ten Main Street, baby, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. The Hidden King Cafe and Bar, right here on Main Street. Two ten Main Street. The Hidden King Cafe and Bar, baby. This is where you want to hang out if you're in Ann Arbor. My name's The Raven, and you just watched the 2023 20, third annual Artoberfest from the Carytown District in Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. You're watching GlobalWorldTV.com, baby.